You're listening to After the Review. After, after the review. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is After the Review, and I'm your host, Peter. And uh, we're flying a solo again this week. You know, we had a couple of guests lined up. Uh, some things fell through, a little bit of technical difficulties, so we're sorry about that. And uh, a little bit of recovery here. That's why the podcast is out a little bit late. But uh, shout out to Terrell for putting on a great bachelor weekend for our boy John. Had a lot of fun. Really great time. And uh, yeah, it was just a really fun time. And can't wait to get that guy married. So I want to start with this. It's been a very eventful week in the NFL. Cam tested positive for coronavirus. We were worried about the Chiefs-Patriots game getting shut down. All that stuff seemed to work out after we lost the Steelers-Titans game. And that game just got moved to Monday night. So it was all good and stuff, but man, it was blatantly obvious how much the Patriots and Cam are just a thing of beauty together almost. I know some people questioned if it would work. I know I was included. I mean, I knew Cam was good, but I mean, they the Patriots dominated that game against the Chiefs, it felt like up front. Now, the Chiefs tacked on a little bit late there, but if they had any sort of competent quarterback play like Cam brings to the table... They, they could have beat them. I, I don't know if the Chiefs want to see Bill Belichick and the Patriots. Patrick Mahomes has been held scoreless without a touchdown in the first half three times in his NFL career. All three times are against Bill Belichick and the Patriots. So he's got something figured out with Patty Mahomes in the first half. Now, again, Pat, Pat's played great in the second half, infamously in that AFC Championship game where he didn't get the uh, coin toss to get the ball in overtime. But... I'll tell you what, the Patriots defense really frustrated the Chiefs. They took away their options. They switched up what they were doing. They were taking away Kelsey, taking away Kelsey. Then they would take away Tyreek. And it was just, they were guessing a lot, KC, it looked like, on offense. And, you know, Brian Hoyer was not good. They benched him. They brought in Stenham at quarterback. But you have Cam back there, and you can pound the rock, control the game. And it really puts the Chiefs in an awkward situation. And I've been really, really high on the Chiefs. I know I was last week, especially on the podcast. But kind of brought them back down to earth for me. And maybe I've been sleeping a little bit on the Patriots. You know, they are now, what are they, 2-2? Two and two? They're 2-2 two and two now. That division's really tough with Buffalo. But if they can sneak into the playoffs, which um, they can if Camp comes back in a reasonable time here, they're, they're going to be an issue, I think, for Kansas City. Now, I don't know about everybody else in the AFC because there's lots of teams and there's lots of stuff to be seen, but I just think it's a good matchup with the way KC wants to play and the way New England's going to make them play. It really puts the pressure on Mahomes to make the right decision every time and Andy Reid to call the right play. Now, again, it's like how much can you stop the Chiefs realistically? But who knows? I think with Cam you can muster up 28 to 35 points. And that could be enough to beat the Chiefs in a tight game that you control the clock, keep Mahomes on the sideline. So, I mean, they dominated time of possession in this game. Let's see if I can pull these time of possession stats. It was was ridiculous. I know in the first half it was 19-9 to in the first half of possession, which is ridiculous. Let's see if I can find these stats. Let's see, T-O-P. Come on, give me some team stats. All right, I can't find it right now, but, uh, oh, wait, here we go. Let's see. Time of possession. Okay, it was 31-28 New England. New England New England dom- pretty even, but New England dominated in the first half time of possession. So, again, competent quarterback play and running the ball really could be an issue for this Chiefs team against the Patriots. So, hoping Cam gets better soon. And, yeah, we'll see at that. Very interesting thing. I'm going to pull him back a little bit on the Chiefs here, maybe a little bit higher on the Rams. Um, another team that was really a letdown, the Dallas Cowboys got embarrassed at home by the, the Cleveland Browns. Now, they almost came back, and the Browns were almost the Browns and let this thing slip away, but they won. And Mike McCarthy doesn't seem to be working in Dallas. They don't give the ball to Zeke. Defense can't stop him nosebleed. Mike Nolan is pathetic on defense, like beyond pathetic at defense. I mean, I could probably score against the Cowboys' defense, drawing up plays with Mike Nolan's defense. It's just awful, 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 awful. Let's see, Cleveland ran for what? Like 300 yards. Cleveland ran for 307 yards against Dallas, and Dallas ran for 85. It should not be this much of a mismatch. Zeke Elliott had 12 carries. What are you doing? Mike McCarthy, what are you doing? 
you need to run Zeke. Zeke is your guy. Dak is so much better when they can run the ball. And I'm going to have the Dak people say, oh, well, Dak threw 58 times for 500 yards, four touchdowns, and one pick. Maybe. Yeah, he did do that. What was the score of this game in the four, going into the fourth quarter? Can you guys tell me? Can you tell me? No, you can't? Well, I can tell you. Score was, 40, score was 41-14 heading into that fourth quarter. I mean, uh, excuse me, they scored right before the end of the third quarter. So the game was 41-14 to with four minutes left in the fourth, third quarter. That game's not close. Dallas did a really good job of coming back and scoring, get it in. Again, loved oh, what I saw from OBJ finally. He had a monster game. Couple of trick play touchdowns. You love to see it. Baker threw the ball for 165 yards for two touchdowns. 19-30, to I'd like that throwing to come down a little bit. But the man threw for 165 yards in a game where they had 500 yards of offense. That's how you win in Cleveland. They got an identity. They pound the rock. You hit OBJ on some big plays. He can really stretch the field. And that's how you win with this thing. I love what Stefanski's doing in Cleveland. They finally have an identity. This is what Baker Mayfield is. He's not the number one overall pick. He's not a transcendent talent. You make him throw the ball efficiently and effectively. You can really hurt people. You throw in a little razzle-dazzle there with OBJ, Jarvis Landry. And then the defense has got to step up a little bit. they got to play a little bit better defense on the back end. But all in all, Cleveland's having a strong showing after that start against Baltimore where they got smacked. I kind of like what I see from the Cleveland Browns. This could be the year they finally get off the schneid and get into the playoffs. But I'd be really worried if I was Dallas. You can't continue to play like this. You can't continue to throw the ball 55 times a game. It's just not sustainable. Your defense is not good enough. The offense is so much better when Zeke pounds the rock. Mike McCarthy, it feels like a bad hire again. He's going back to his ways in Green Bay, and we're seeing what Green Bay's doing with Matt LaFleur and Aaron Rodgers. They're averaging 38 points a game, and Rodgers is carving everybody up with the backup of a running game now and Aaron Jones. And I mean, they don't even have receivers, and they'll just throw to the running back, throw to the tight end, or run the ball, and they can score with anybody. So this is a really bad look on Mike McCarthy, I think. I think the Cowboys are in real trouble. The only thing saving the Cowboys is that this division is an absolute dumpster fire. Just a real train wreck. But they got to get this thing figured out soon. They got to get back to the run game. Uh, I just don't know. What do they go? Who do they have next week? I don't even know who the Cowboys have next week. Who the Cowboys? Cowboys have the Giants at home, so they should beat up on the Giants. The Giants are the worst team in football, I think. They're definitely, even though they played a little strong against the Jet, uh, against the Rams, I think they're worse than the Jets. But uh, yeah, the, the, the two New York teams are the worst teams in football. Jet, Cowboys should beat up on them to bring things back a little bit. But I'd be very concerned with Mike, uh, Mike Nolan's defense and having to throw the ball 55 times a game. It's not sustainable. You can't beat teams in the playoffs. You're not going to beat good teams playing like that without a doubt. Who the Browns? Oh, interesting one. Browns, Colts, Browns next week. Two, three, and one teams. I'm really excited to see that. It's going to be a quick, short game. A lot of running right there. Who would have thought that that, that looks like the best game of the week next week, Col- Colts and Browns. I'm excited to see. They're protecting Phillip. They're pounding the rock, playing good defense. They beat the Bears. Um, so, yeah, I like that matchup. That's an interesting game. Um, let's see what else do I want to talk about. Okay, I want to get on. I'm going to pull back a little bit on my critique of Carson Wentz. We'll stay in the NFC East here. I was a little harsh on Carson, and you know what? He showed he showed me something on Sunday night against the Niners. Now the Niners had nobody at quarterback again, but Carson Wentz was throwing again. He's throwing to me, Terrell, in a garbage can out there, and you know they didn't have any running game going. They couldn't get Miles Sanders going against the Niners, and Wentz willed that team to victory. He drug them to the finish line. His line is not going to look good. He was 18-28 to 28 for 193 yards, a touchdown and a pick. But he absolutely willed them. He had a monster pass to Fulgham for a touchdown at the end of this game to put them ahead. And it, it really kind of sparked. He has a 42-yard pass to Fulgham. I don't even know who Fulgham is exactly. I bet you guys don't know either. To put them up eight, or put them up four, put them up 18-14, then they got a pick six in that very next play, and that kind of put the game away. 
Really interesting stuff from the Eagles here. They're always hurt. It's amazing to see that they're they they have nobody. And I'm I'm gonna give some more love to Carson Wentz. I liked what I saw from him. He willed that team to victory. And at one, two, and one, they are in first place in the NFC East through four weeks. That is the worst division in football by a long shot. It might be the worst division in football in nearly two decades. I I, I don't know what to say for the NFC East, but Kudos to Carson Wentz. I really liked what I saw. Drug his team to the finish line. Big win for him. Big win for the Eagles. Just to get the first one in the books. I don't know if I can keep seeing this. I don't know if they can sustain this long term with how bad they are. They got to get back to the run game. They got to play a little bit more defense against better teams. The Niners offense was not good with Nick Mullins, a quarterback. They benched him for C.J. Beathard eventually. But again, see, I was a little harsh on Carson. I want to pull back on that. Okay, someone who I wasn't harsh on, though, Kyler Murray and Cliff Kingsbury. They lost to the Panthers. That's two weeks in a row they've lost. Panthers have won two in a row, looking strong with Teddy. Good for Teddy. I'm going to give Teddy some love there. But, again, Arizona, you pull... You pulled back again. I mean, Kyler Murray was 24-31 and threw for 133 yards. Like, what is that? That's not even a passing game. I mean, he threw for three touchdowns. Kyler was good. Again, I think Kyler's good. Kyler's very solid. He's going to go through some ups and downs. But their entire running game consisted of Kyler Murray. Six carries for 78 yards. So that's him making plays with his legs. They ran Kenyon Drake for 13 times for 35 yards. Kiff Kling, Kiff Cliff Kingsbury's offense is pathetic to me, I think. In the NFL, I don't think it works. It really, really struggles. He can't run the ball. His running game concept is terrible. I I mean, you can't constantly rely on your quarterback for scramble plays to make up your offense. We saw how well that worked for A&M with Johnny. It was the same offense with Cliff. It's just not long-term sustainable. I mean, when you're throwing the ball for 24 times for 133 yards you're not scaring anybody I mean the only thing I guess you could say is maybe you're getting time keeping time of possession but not even Carolina the ball for 37 minutes to Arizona's 22 so you're not even doing anything it's just I I don't get what they're trying to do there it's I don't like Kiff Cliff Kingsbury's offense in the NFL I'm going to continue to critique it they were started off strong at 2-0 I was hesitant to crown them they're now 2-2 two and two with two not-so-great losses to the Lions and the Panthers. Uh, it's just, it's not a good, I think people are starting to figure out this offense. It's super one-dimensional. It's super short game. And it just limits what you can do from a long-term standpoint in the NFL. You can't consistently rely on every play working in the NFL to pick up first downs. And that's what it feels like the Cardinals rely on. And it, it's just not going to work. Now, on the flip side of the coin, I want to give a shout-out to Matt Rule. I was very questionable of him after that first week loss to the Raiders in his play calling. Looking strong without Christian McCaffrey, they are. They're really spreading the ball out. Robbie Anderson is crushing it in Carolina. Had another nice day for 99 yards. He's been tearing it up as the number two receiver. I mean, he's really the number one receiver, but he's playing like number two. People have been focusing on DJ Moore. Teddy Bridgewater had an unbelievable touchdown run. you love to see it again. So, uh, you know... Shout out to Matt Rule on another win. Maybe turn the Panthers around. All this talk for tank for Trevor. They may not be tanking, man. You got McCaffrey. If Bridge, Bridgewater can be a guy, pick up some more pieces in the draft, trade maybe that pick. I like what I see out of them. I really, really do. But, yeah, that's how it goes sometimes. Um, what else? Anything interesting? No, not really. Tampa Bay, big, big day from Tom Brady. Five touchdowns. They were trailing by a lot in that game. And Tom Brady became the oldest quarterback in the NFL history to throw five touchdowns. Threw it to five different receivers for the first time in his career, too. So that was something. Justin Herbert, the rookie for the Chargers, looked really nice. Had a good day. Has a ho- That man has a hose on him. Had a, like a 60-yard touchdown pass in the air. Really something nice there. But again, good comeback for the Buccaneers. They were down 24-7 to in this game. Really swung the tide right before the half with a fumble by a... Uh, LA inside their own nine again Chargers are going to Chargers they're a young team not great good win for the Bucks. they stay on the stay on the winning ways I'm not a hundred percent sold on Tampa Bay I did like what I saw especially out of Mike Evans it was a really gutty performance by Mike Evans he was banged up 
pretty much all game, and he kind of hobbled around all day. But he got it done. He got the job done. I was very happy with what I saw from him. So moving in the right direction, the Buccaneers, um, I'm going to be a little— I'm- I hate to pull back on them a little bit. I really, they're my Super Bowl pick. I've been loving what I've seen from them. Big game this week against the Bears on Thursday night. Bears are 3 and 1. Nick Foles laid an egg like I said he would. Not a great quarterback as a starter. I, I do got to give Terrell some love here. He said maybe the Bears should start Trubisky in the first half and then bring in Foles at some point in time as the relief quarterback, like a relief pitcher, and maybe they'll be pretty unbeatable. So big Thursday night game that everyone should watch. 3 and 1 Buccaneers at the 3 and 1 Bears. Uh, it's a real telling game for both these teams. The Bears win this game, okay, they're back on track. Maybe they are the real deal. If the Buccaneers win this game, maybe the Bears are more fool's gold than anything. They had three comeback wins the first three weeks, and they're coming back down to earth. Um, Another interesting game to look at, we could talk about the Bills, I guess. The Bills are undefeated. They won again. They're 4-0. Took care of the Raiders. Josh Allen is a dark horse for the MVP. No longer. That man is right behind Russell Wilson for that MVP. He He's transformed his game this year. Him with Stephon Diggs. They lead the league in pass plays of 20-plus yards downfield. Just everything's clicking for them. They could run the ball with Josh Allen and Singletary at running back. It's a great combo. He's... Is at, he was so inaccurate in college, and that was a big knock. And he's throwing the ball. I want to say I want to say he was around seventy percent completion for the season. It's just very, very impressive stuff from Josh Allen. He's second in the NFL in passing yards, just tearing it up. They are going to be a tough out. They are going to be a very tough out. The Bills. I think they're going to win this division. I know it's the Patriots' division until it's not until the Patriots give it up. But uh, you got to love what you see from the Buffalo Bills so far. They're really playing strong. They have a very tough game against the 3-0 Titans this week in Tennessee. Tennessee had the bye this week because of the corona outbreak. So could be big time here. That's a very interesting game. Going to separate the men from the boys right here. Bills go 5-0. and Bills are almost a lock to make the playoffs with this extended playoff format. So you definitely, definitely have to keep your eye on them. Josh Allen is a MVP dark horse no more. And I know people were kind of hesitant on him. I know a couple of guys that got a big bets on him at 40 to 1, 50 to 1, 35 to 1 in Vegas. I know a couple guys I heard have a bet on him to win the MVP. So Russell Wilson's firmly in front right now, but Josh Allen's nipping on his heels. Um, yeah, we'll see. I love what I see out of the Bills. Good for the Bills. These are not my Bills. These are not your Bills. These are more my father's Bills that went to four straight Super Bowls. And it's just exciting times in Buffalo. Great fan base. They deserve it. And, you know, I they may be a top five team in the NFL. They're real scary right now. Again, let me talk about Seattle. They won again. They're 4-0. They have an interesting game this weekend. They flew from Seattle to Miami and back. Took care of business. Vikings at the Seahawks on Sunday night. I know. I'm being a homer right here. The Vikings looked good against Tennessee They let that game slip away in the fourth quarter, but looked strong on offense. They had another strong offensive showing this week against the Texans. I mean, they got Bill O'Brien fired fired from GM and head coach, which is always good to be a team that gets other teams' head coach fired. You feel good about that. But it was about time in Houston. But Minnesota put up another 30-piece. That's back-to-back weeks with 30 points, three out of the four. They only had one dud against Indy. Justin Jefferson has really come on. He's the highest-graded rookie, according to Pro Football Focus, since they started grading rookies um, in 2006 on offense. He's got a 90.6 PFF rating right now currently. It's the highest rating of a rookie through four weeks. He's just a stud out there, a great replacement for Stephon Diggs. They still love pounding the rock with Dalvin Cook. That's where the offense runs through. The defense needs to be better. They were a little bit better this week against Deshaun and the and the Texans, but they need to be better if they're going to beat Seattle. I'm very interested in this game Sunday night because it's a game that the Vikings normally lose, but they are playing a lot better. And the Seahawks, no fans at home. It's interesting. I'm very intrigued by this game. This game is going to be a 30-point win for the Seahawks, or I think the Vikings win a tight one. Or a 30-point win for the Seahawks and the Vikings don't show up. If the Vikings show up, I think they're going to win this game. It's very. I'm very interested to see... It's a big showing off point. Russell Wilson might throw for four touchdowns, but I don't know how Seattle's going to... They can't get a pass rush on Kirk Cousins, and that's the only thing that makes Kirk uncomfortable. So I think it's going to be a high-scoring and fun game to watch. I 
I'm not. I I know the world was melting with my Vikings a couple weeks ago, and I'm I'm back. They do this to me every year. I'm back on them. Oh, it's so frustrating. I have faith again. I think they could find a way and get themselves into the playoffs. I know Terrell will try to talk me off the ledge, but they're looking a lot better, and I'm cautiously optimistic of what I'm seeing for them. I don't know. That's I'm just a hopeless Viking fan. Another team, Joe Burrow's got his first win. Looked strong against the Jags. It is the Jags. You know, they're pretty bad too. But Joe Burrow's looking strong again as a rookie. I love to see it, man. The Bengals actually ran the ball with Joe Mixon this week, but they got a tough one with the Ravens. Ravens bounce back. Lamar was flat again against Washington. Washington outgained them in this game. So, really, really, just really awkward. Hey, let me double check on that. Oh, no. Sorry. They were outgained only by seven yards, Baltimore. So, they were pretty much dead even, and they threw for more than Baltimore did. It, it just, I don't know. It just, Balt, Lamar looked, I, I don't know if we fi- people have figured out Lamar. It was a flat game for him. Ran the ball, had a nice touchdown run again. But just a really fat game, flat game passing from Lamar. So, we'll see what he does against the Bengals. Bad defense, for sure. I'm not going to question that. But, I, 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 again, this could be the knock and the ceiling for the Ravens is Lamar and his ability to throw when they're down and throw when they're in bad situations. I don't know if he can. this team can come from behind against good teams, especially Kansas City, New England, Buffalo, teams like that that they're going to see in the AFC. Who knows, even Pittsburgh maybe. I'm not 100% sold on Pittsburgh yet because I didn't get to see him play this week. But, again, it's a it's a tough thing to ask Lamar to do. And, you know, maybe he's just a guy that does this. Maybe he's not a guy that can lead your team to the promised land and he's a guy that's going to put up crazy numbers and it's just he can't play from behind and it that's that. You never know. Great kid. Works really hard. He needs to improve in the passing game. I'm worried about that with the Ravens and my AFC pick. So, yeah, we'll go for that. All right, let's move on. NBA Finals. Lakers got a 3-1 lead. LeBron, they just took a tough victory from the Miami Heat tonight. It was ugly. It was gritty. LeBron played terrible again. I was I was for sure thinking the Heat were going to win this game with how bad the Lakers were playing. They couldn't hit any shots. Uh, shout out to KCP. He had a monster game. I think he had 15 points for them. He had a bunch of big shots, especially down the stretch. I mean, I'm saying monster game. It's a monster game for KCP. With YouTube I'll just TV, put it at that. T- it, it was a big game. Yeah, let's see. He had, uh, yeah, he had 15 points. TV, plus eight the TV on the plus minus, big time. Anthony Davis had a dagger three to put this We're game away. He had a channels, flat 22. LeBron demand, was really flat most of the game, but kind of turned it on on the back end in the it's fourth the quarter. It was, you know, it wasn't great from him, but he had 28. It was 10 of 12 from the free throw line, big time there. Hit a couple of big shots. Got some gritty performances from the bench. You know, Kuzma had nine. Morris had nine. Caruso had seven. Rondo was spectacular out there at point guard. Was one for seven from the field. Hit a crucial layup in that game to put him up five. But seven rebounds, five assists. He was he was out there making plays. And, you know, Jimmy Butler wasn't as good as he was in game three. 22 points tonight. And I think the Heat are done. They're going to have two days off to rebound. It just, that kind of felt like the series tonight. The Heat were looking to win this game and get this thing 2-2. You got to commend the Heat. You got to commend Jimmy Butler. He has been really good for this team as a leader. I know I caught a lot of flack for saying that. What's he won? What's he lead? The guy is a leader. He plays hard. I'll take Jimmy Butler on my team every day of the week. I'm so sad the Sixers let him go for a garbage coach they ended up firing one year later. I would have moved heaven and earth for Jimmy Butler to be the leader of my team. He plays hard, man. He plays so hard. He's not the most talented guy in the world, but he gets it done. So Jimmy Butler love. It was an immaculate Game 3 heroic performance so far in the finals. His team's going to fall just short, but nothing to shake your head at. Just an outstanding run. I'm expecting the Lakers to finish this thing up in five. I would be surprised if the Heat won Game 5. Really would. I expect the Lakers in a blowout and a coronation for LeBron in his fourth title. Could be speaking too soon, but 
they just I, I don't see the Lakers losing three for sure in a row. Uh, but I expect a Game 5 victory, and it'll be a 5-5-5-5 five, 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 five for LeBron in the playoffs and the Lakers. Giving him ring number 4 would be better if he gave him ring number 5. But ring number 4, third ring with the third different team. Probably going to get the Finals MVP with his third different team. So that'll be something to look forward to the rest of this week. And yeah, shout out to them. A valiant performance by Jimmy Butler in the Heat. They're just going to fall a little bit short. And that's okay, you know. Not always about winning and losing. It's about giving your best and trying hard. And shit, man, the Heat impressed me. They showed me a lot. Again, love Jimmy Butler. Love what he brings to the table. Wish my Sixers still had him, but they don't. It is what it is, though. Okay, moving to baseball. We're in the ALDS. Uh, Pretty great first round of the wild card round. Lots of fun. They're in the bubble now in baseball. They're playing in San Diego and L.A. and Houston and Arlington. So they're in a bubble semi-thing, and it's been a lot of fun. It's great to have playoff baseball back. You wish the crowd was there to have the you know the fans in the crowd kind of make playoff baseball, but it, it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. You got to feel for the NL and AL Central. They had a combined seven teams make the playoffs, and all seven teams were eliminated in the first round. Just tragic stuff. You hate to see it. I mean, not really as long as you're not a fan of those teams. But divisional round's been good so far. We have Astros, Athletics, Yankees, Rays, Dodgers, Padres, and Braves, Marlins. And it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to a Braves, Dodgers, World Series, or NLCS, I'm expecting. Braves up 1-0. I think the Dodgers are winning this. Uh, the Dodgers were actually losing game one tonight. That game's still going on. Oh, they're tied 1-1 right now, just to give you a little heads up of where we are when I'm recording this. Yankees and Rays are tied 1-1. Yankees let a game slip tonight. Wasn't great. Strong performance last night in game one. But no days off in the CS or in the DS or the CS. So, going to have to have short memories if you're a team. Astros have a commanding 2-0 lead on the A's. Uh, again, how does Rob Manfred let the Astros into the playoffs? I understand you don't want to suspend the players, blah, blah, blah. The MLBPA has all this power. They don't want to risk losing their playchecks. How come you couldn't make the franchise, the Houston Astros, banned from the playoffs? It has nothing to do with that. They can't qualify for the playoffs. That way you could have avoided all this nonsense. Now we're going to have to deal with the Astros still in the playoffs. People are still upset they didn't get punished for cheating. This is going to be a big thing. It's going to be a large stain on Rob Manfred's career as a commissioner, letting this thing go on without any punishment. Hopefully the A's find a way back. Hopefully the Yankees hopefully the Yankees get through the Rays and can give them some payback. We just the last thing you need to see is this Astros team in the World Series or winning a title. They need to be punished for their cheating. I'm going to pound on it to the day I die. They're a bunch of cheaters, and they're getting away with it. How, Like you said, I don't think Rob Manfred even thought this thing through. You could have easily banned the franchise from the postseason, and you deal, you know, that's between the, the contracts between the Astros and their players based on playoff bonuses, stuff like that, based on qualification or not. So they could have let them figure all that stuff out. I don't think they should be here. They're a sham of a baseball team, but they're still playing. They know how to play in October, and they're still here. Oh, really tough game. Maybe should have been reseeded because they should be playing the Rays right now. They had the worst record in baseball to qualify, but they finished second, so they didn't reseed. So another thing they could have had is they should have had to play the Rays in the first round because the Rays and the, the Rays and the Yankees are two top tier teams that are going to kill each other in this five game set with no days off, and the Astros are going to be sitting there comfortably, probably. You know, with some multiple days off, get their pitching set up. Just an awkward situation to deal with. That's my little vent right there on Major League Baseball. Really upset with Rob Manfred and all that nonsense. Can't believe it. It's going to bug me forever. I know I'm preaching to the choir, but it is what it is. But I'm just going to keep hammering home awkwardness. It's awful. I I hate it. I can't stand it. You can tell I'm just want to rant about this thing. But... Alas, I must move forward. Okay, I want to talk about some people who uh, balled out this week and some people who really uh, were not great. I want to give some love to my man. I've been critical of him, but I want to give this man some love. I want to give some love for OBJ this week. OBJ, I talked about him a little bit earlier in the show. My man had a day this week. OBJ had a day this week. 
I mean, let's see. Let's pull up these numbers right here. OBJ week four. I know he had three touchdowns. Had a 73-yard rushing touchdown to put the game away. Let's see his full stat line. Let's see. OBJ, two carries for 73 yards and a touchdown, including the game winner. Five catches for 81 yards and two touchdowns. Big time day back in Dallas. He loved playing against the Cowboys, I'll tell you that much. So shout out to OBJ. He balled out for me this week. I was really impressed. Big week for him in fantasy for me. So that gives him a little bit of extra love for me. Big time, big time stuff from OBJ. And you know, trying to think about who was in my doghouse. I could I could look at the doghouse here. I could almost put a Oh, you know who's in my doghouse? Tom Herman in Texas. Let me go on a little bit of rant here. Losing to TCU, I I know you're all here for this Tom Herman and Texas slander, but every time you all tell me Texas is back, they're never back. Tom, oh, Tom Herman's a great coach. I always thought he was a sham. I did not like what I saw from Tom Herman. Just, he's, he's such a fake person. He thinks he's smarter than everybody, and he's really not. He said Gary Patterson doesn't do anything for TCU, and he's 1-3 in in his career against TCU at Texas. That's not good enough when you have a far superior team and recruiting at Texas. Couldn't, lost to the Horned Frogs again at home in Austin. Jess, need to put this man under the bus. Um, He's getting no love from me, that's for dang sure. And they got OU this week, Red River rivalry. Oklahoma's also really struggling with Spencer Rattler at quarterback. Another guy I don't think is really the guy. He's young, but he has not looked good the last two weeks for Oklahoma State or for Oklahoma. Just pedestrian at best, not big in situations that he needs to be in. It's just you can't lose to Kansas State and Iowa State. The Big Twelve is a whole mess, which you love to see. I think the Big Twelve is terrible, but big meaningful game. If Texas loses this game to Oklahoma, really got to consider. Tom Herman's on the super hot seat with this team. This team should be winning the Big 12 comfortably this year, and they look like they really struggle. I mean, they're the only ranked team in the conference, I believe. Yep, Texas is the only ranked team in the Big 12. Oh, no, Okie State currently ranked in the Big 12. So that's a thing. They got two ranked teams in the conference. When you look at the SEC, I mean, Jesus, what does the SEC have? I mean, the SEC has like six teams ranked in the top 10, I think. It's ridiculous. Let's see. Yeah, they have Georgia. They have Alabama, Georgia, Florida in the top four. That's three teams in the top four. Not to mention Tennessee, Auburn also in there, LSU even after their loss. A&M still ranked after the loss to Alabama. I'm not going to go into them. They didn't look great. But, again, such a powerful conference, the SEC, and the Big 12 such a dud. You can't be this bad if you're Texas and Tom Herman. So I'm here for the Tom Herman slander. I think he's, a, I think he's not a great head coach. Anybody can win in Houston. Everyone has one at Houston, so that's boosted his numbers a bit. There's my Texas slander for the week. I know my Aggie fans out there are going to enjoy this. I'm not going to talk too much about the Aggies because we did not look good against Alabama. They're uh, yeah, pretty flat for us this week. But interesting game between OU and Texas. Again, Red River rivalry Saturday morning. Check that out. Um, and uh, Yeah, I think that's going to do it for us this week. I hope you all enjoy these solo podcasts. I know they're a little bit different. We just had some scheduling issues and stuff like that, working some things out. Also been, you know, was fairly busy in quarantine. So I great appreciate you all dealing with these lateness. And, uh, you know, we never miss an episode, though. We never miss an episode. That's what we preach. Again, check out the links in the description for more content. You know, subscribe to the channel if you're watching on YouTube. Follow the podcast. I have a podcast, Podbean, wherever you're getting this thing from. We do get daily stuff on my YouTube channel, uh, sports stuff. We have picks with Pete every Friday, going over NFL picks for the week, doing the spread, get those gambling addicts their fix. Uh, Again, so yeah, appreciate the support for the channel. Thanks for listening. I'll see you all next week.